gloomy Sunday with shadows I've spent it all. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to week two of Camp NaNoWriMo. I thought I'd try things a little bit different this time. It's Monday morning, bright and early, and I've got my coffee with me, and I am ready to go. I hope to do my future vlogs differently by recording my audio more times sporadically throughout the week, so you get kind of more of an inside view uh, of the writing process as I write. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and I hope that this week's vlog turns out better than last week. And let's see if I can catch up on word count. I just wanted to talk to you guys for a little bit about a couple things. I know having spent so long on this project, when I first started getting feedback from my beta readers and my editors, I was not reluctant to listen, but I was I was worried. Being on one project that long, because you get really attached to the words and the scenes and you know, the story as you've written it, because you've been working away on it, pounding away at the keyboard, chiseling away on a masterpiece for half a decade. And here it is, now people are giving me all this advice, telling me what's wrong, but I need to remember that uh, that's what editors are for. That's what I'm doing. I'm paying them to tell me what's wrong. I think the most challenging thing for me, though, is when editors can pinpoint something and tell me what's wrong, but they can't tell me how to fix it. That's why I wanted to try to make my writing advice series, so that way it could help anyone like me who was struggling and maybe uh, knew their problems or knew that their novel needed some work, and so that we can help pinpoint those problems and also figure out how to fix them. I don't want to say my backstory's flat, but I felt that the backstory needed work, so it's funny to me that, you know, at first not wanting to take the advice and then not wanting to change very much in the story, I've come to this point now where I'm excited about change and I am ready for change. What my hope was, was to write out the backstory for these characters and find the best, uh, least invasive ways to incorporate this uh, extra exposition into the, you know, just the meat of the novel to help flesh everything out completely. But once I draft all the exposition, I'm gonna move into full-fledged rewrites. Because now that everyone's pointed out the errors, I plan on going through and plotting out just how to fix them. My idea on trying to figure out how to fix all these issues was, I got the idea to look at my plotline basically, and my plotline is a working document that changes. As I write, I uh, update it every draft that I do, but yes, no, I'm very excited for these rewrites because what my plan was, was to sit down with my plotline and my story and map out every detail in every scene in every subchapter that makes up every chapter. Literally every scene would be accounted for by word count characters there, what happens in the plot, and even tracking the characters' emotions throughout each of the scenes. I thought this would be the most effective way to pinpoint the weakest areas and figure out how to not only fix those but also pinpoint the best places to add additional scenes or extend others. Well, here we are at the end of week two of Camp NaNoWriMo, April 2017. It's been a crazy writing week. I'm only 2,258 words behind right now, and this video might go up a little late, but you know, that's okay. I am I know I can catch up, and I'm just glad I'm not further behind. But during this week while I was writing, I was overwhelmed with a feeling that I realized I had written about before, and it was in chapter 3 of my novel, The Suicide Box. Since it was a piece of writing that helped get me through the week, I wanted to end this video with me reading you guys the piece of writing that I did that helped me make that connection and realize that parts of my story mean more to me now than they did when I wrote them. I, I don't have it memorized, I'm, I'm just gonna read it off my paper here, you guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it, I hope it's not too dramatic, I'm, I'm sorry if it is, you guys. I had the epiphany, as I sometimes do, where I realized why I write. It always comes down to the same thing, that I'm going to die, that we're all going to die, and I want someone, somewhere, to know that I live. How can a revelation such as this so go so easily forgotten? Those childhood dreams can still come true if I choose to believe in them. 
It's okay to believe in things that aren't real. It's like any art that I might create is only me trying to capture those rare moments. My, my mind, heart, and body were one. All the times, I was wide awake. Shed the old skin. Abandon your fear. Transcend.